Hello, everyone. My name is Miranda Lam, and I'm the professor who will be teaching this course on personal financial planning. Welcome. This course is divided into modules, and within each module, we'll go over similar topics grouped by chapters. Let's get started. In this first module, we're going to go over some basics on financial planning. We're going to look at what the current state of financial literacy is and also help you evaluate your own level of knowledge in financial planning. We're going to help you develop some personal goals for you. And then we're also going to introduce uh, tools that are important in financial planning and in finance in general. And that includes the uh, time value of money when you're analyzing your decisions. Since you are here, you're probably already interested in the topic. But let's go back and take a quick look at why should anyone, including you, care about financial planning. Making good financial decisions is important. Uh, because first of all, that will help you become more e effective when you need to obtain financial resources. Financial resources can include um, buying uh, important things in, a in your life, such as a house or a car, uh, or also taking out loans to help you make those uh, purchases. Good financial decisions will help you to avoid taking on too much debt and also depending on other people uh, and become self-sufficient. Reducing financial worries is obviously a good thing. In fact, financial stress is oftentimes cited as an important stress factor for a lot of people. And having fewer financial worries often lead to better personal relationships with your significant other or even simply with friends and family. You will not become an expert financial advisor through this class. However, the goal of this class is to help you become an informed consumer. So when you finish this class, you will be able to evaluate recommendations from professional advisors so that you will be able to make your own decision with the help of professionals if necessary. Before we delve into the details, let's first take a look at how much do you know now? You may be surprised at how much you already know. In 1929, the National Financial Education Council found that there is a financial illiteracy epidemic in the U.S. What they did is that they sent out a survey and asked respondents to take a national financial literacy test. Of all the respondents, they score only 66%. Uh, so that's uh, maybe barely passing, but that's really not sufficient for them to become informed consumers and make effective decisions. They also find that there is a growing gap in financial literacy. Uh, Respondents that are black and his, Hispanic tend to score substantially worse than white respondents. In 2021, uh, these four professors in finance uh, focused on their study on the differences between racial and ethnic groups when it comes to finance, financial literacy. They used five questions in their study. We're going to uh, let's go through this question together and see how you did compared to uh, the participants in their study. If you don't have pen and pa paper handy, pause the video and go grab some uh, pen and papers and we'll get started. So question one is about risk. The question is buying a single company's stock usually provides a safer return than a stock mutual fund. Is that true or false? So write down one for true and two for false. Pause the video until you're ready and we'll advance to the next question. Question two has to do with interest. Suppose you have $100 in a savings account and the interest rate was 2% per year. After five years, how much do you think you would have in the account if you left the money in the account to grow? Answer so one is more than 120, 102. Two is exactly 102. Three is less than $102, four is I don't know. So write down your answer. Again, if you are not ready, pause the video. Going on to question three. Regarding inflation, 
Imagine that the interest rate on your savings account was 1% per year and the inflation rate was 2% per year. After one year, how much would you be able to buy with the money in this account? One year, you'll be able to buy more than today. Two years, exactly the same as what you would be able to buy today. Three years, less than today. And four years, I don't know. And that's perfectly okay to write number four if that is your answer. Again, write down your answer and pause if you need more time. Question four has to do with housing prices. Do you think it's true or false? The statement, housing prices in the U.S. can never go down. Write down one if you think it is true and write down two if you think it's false. Pause again if you need more time. We'll go on to question five. In regards to long-term investment, consider a very long time period, let's say 10 or 20 years. Which asset, meaning which of the five options, will give, normally give you the highest return? Pick one if you think stocks will have the highest return, two if you think bonds will have the highest return, and three if you think savings account will have the highest return, and four, if precious metal, precious metal includes uh, gold and uh, silver and other precious metals. And five is, I don't know. Right, pause again if you need more time. We're gonna go review the answer. Let's take a look at your score. Question one, the correct answer is false. Question two, the correct answer is more than $102. So if you put $100 in a savings account and interest rate is 2% per year, after five years, you would have more than $102. Question three has to do with inflation and the correct answer is less than today, three. So if you, the question is that if your interest rate is only 1%, but inflation is 2%, after one year, you'll be able to buy less than you can today. Housing prices in the U.S. actually, the answer is false. Housing prices can go down. It doesn't always go up. And when it comes to long-term investment, stocks will generate the highest return in the long run. So take a moment to add up your score so you get one point for each correct answer. So if you get all five questions correct, you'll have five points. Ready to see how you do? Let's go ahead. This is the result from uh, the study by the researchers in 2021. They find that the average score for black participants is 2.136, which means that uh, they get a little over two questions correct. Uh, for Hispanic participants is 2.382, and for white participants is 3.375. This is all the participants together. They also break down the results by income group. As you can see, the low income group overall in all racial groups have a lower score than the high income group, which is over $100,000. So in fact, if you look at the highest score group, this is the group that are white participants with an income over $100,000. They get on average more than four questions correct. And you'll notice that uh, for uh, black participants and, and Hispanic participants, their scores are lower even within the same income group. So there is definitely disparities when it comes to financial literacy score uh, amongst different racial groups. We did not know the reason for why the scores are different. Uh, however, what we can do is do better in terms of education, not just in terms of outreach, but also in the educational materials. And that is actually what this course intended to do as well. Let's take a look at the overall factors that may affect how you uh, develop your financial plan. First is your life cycle. Uh, life cycle de describes the different life stages, not just your age. Life stages may include your education journey, uh, your personal relationship journey, uh, whether or not you are single, in a committed relationship, have children, no children, um, whether you're starting in your career, you're restarting your career, you're changing your career, or you're advancing in your career. Each stage has its unique financial needs. 
And then there is the personal factor, and this is the age, which is an important factor. But not all age have the same life cycle, right? You can be at the same age, but at different stages in your life.、Uh, the size of the household, your income, and the number of dependents. A number of dependents may differ, may be different from your household size. You may be financially responsible for someone who is not living with you. Uh, also important is your own personal values. Personal values are ideas and principle that you consider correct, desirable,、uh, and important. So that、uh, we'll take into that, take those into account when we discuss how do you incorporate and live out your value within your financial plan. Traditionally, financial planning often is assumed. The planning is done for a traditional household that has two parents, two kids in the middle or upper middle income class.、Uh, so some of the advice and also knowledge assume that someone comes from this traditional household. That obviously does not address the need of everyone. So in this class, we will actually look at the、uh, various. Financial needs for a more inclusive demographic, meaning that you may not be a traditional household. You may be a single parent.、Uh, you may be two income with no kids. You may be single. You may be in a committed relationship. You may have to take care financially of both your children and your parents. So the so-called sandwich generation, or you may be responsible for.、Uh, Your an extended family beyond just your parent and children, maybe your siblings. So we'll take all that into account as we develop financial plans. So you have have a chance to incorporate your own personal life stage in developing your own needs. Here are the basic steps in financial planning. Step one. Is to know where you are because if you don't know where you are, you can't really go where you want to go. So what that means is you have to evaluate your current financial position.、Uh, we're gonna go over how would you do that. How do you create your personal financial statement? So that is、uh, the the first、uh, item that we'll go over. And then you need to decide where you want to go.、Uh, that means setting your financial goals. The typical we typically classify goals into、uh, different、uh, based on. Is time frame. So short term goals are typically within one to two years. Intermediate goals are less than within five years, and long term goals are beyond five years. So as you can see,、uh, short term goals may be simple purchases or emergency funds or vacations. Intermediate goal may be larger purchases such as a car or maybe down payment for a house. Long term goal will be planning for your children, planning for your own retirement. And so forth. We'll go over each of those stages, and also how would you use different financial instruments to help you reach the goal. Once you know your goal and you know where you are, you can decide how to get there. And to do that, you need to develop a budget. Again, we'll go over that, and we'll talk about how you can invest、um, your money to reach your future goal. Uh, and also borrowing money to reach a more current goal. Based after we have done the analysis and the calculation, you can choose the best route, and that is when you take into account your life stages, your unique situation, your personal values, and we also talk about overall factors in the economy and the trade-off between risk and return. Then you are ready to create and implement your own financial action plan. At this stage, you may or may not need the help of a financial professional. We'll actually talk about that in in future chapters.、Uh, we will show you some simple do-it-yourself plan,、uh, and that may be adequate for you. But you, if that is not the case, you also will become an informed consumer and ask the correct question and and find the right financial advisor for you. Uh, as all plans, they will not go as predicted. Life is full of surprises, so it's important to review and revise your plan. At the minimum, you should revise your review your plan once a year,、uh, and also when important life event happens, such as getting married or getting a divorce,、uh, birth of children, or death of relatives. So all those are important things to take into account. 
So we talk about setting financial goals. Uh, so a goal should be very specific, meaning that you should know when you want to achieve that goal and how much money you need in order to uh, to consider that goal uh, the goal accomplished. So we talk about short term goals within one to two years. Uh, some example we have mentioned that could be a vacation or paying off your credit card balance or small purchases. And then intermediate goal within five years uh, could be paying off your st student loan, uh, purchasing a car, or down, um, and long-term goal could be down payment for a house, college fund for children, your own retirement. So based on your own unique life situation, um, these goals are not set in stone. These are just examples. So if you are slightly older or more established in your career, you might you might be ready to buy a house within the next five years. So then saving for down payment for a house will be an intermediate goal for you. So again, these are just examples. So this is a good time to pause and think about what are your goals? What would you want to accomplish in the next year or two, in the next five years? And what are some of the things that you want to achieve in the long run? We'll cover a lot of information in this course. However, one of the most important things to take away is to know what you don't know. And so knowing what you don't know is a very important knowledge. Uh, for most of us, our employers, uh, human resources department, it has a lot of resources for retirement planning and also health insurance and other benefits. So that can, that's a very valuable resource and most of the time, of course, it is free. You can also use financial professionals and we'll talk about those in details, uh, different kinds and what are they uh, specialize in. Uh, and financial professionals range from financial planners, stockbrokers to insurance agencies, uh, credit counselors to lawyers. And we'll also... Um, go for different types of financial institutions. And this can be confusing sometimes. So financial institutions include banks. So most of us probably have a bank, uh, but then what are investment companies and what are brokerage firms and how do they relate to each other? We'll go over that as well. You can also get information sources for financial planning uh, online or on paper. Uh, this range from newspapers, magazines, podcasts, YouTube videos to uh, uh, phone apps. So we'll, in addition to um, gaining the knowledge yourself, we'll also help you evaluate uh, which of these resources are valid, reliable, and appropriate for you. Inflation is particularly important when we think about financial planning. So just a brief preview of what inflation is. Inflation is defined as the change in the consumer price index or CPI. CPI consumer index is computed and published by a government agency by the Bureau of Labor St of St Statistics. So the BLS publishes CPI every month. Uh, what the consumer price index measure is the prices that an urban consumer pay for a specific set of goods and services. So your personal experience may be different from the official inflation rate for that reason. If you don't live in an urban area, then you may be consuming things that are different than a, uh, this is a standardized urban consumer if you don't buy the same sets of goods and services. So goods and services range everything from gas for your car to eating out in the restaurant, uh, clothing, and so forth. So if your consum consumption habit is different from this uh, typical urban consumer, your personal experience of inflation may be different from the official statistics. So you want to keep that into account. Inflation is important because we all know when prices go up, we feel a lot worse because we can no longer purchase the same thing with the same amount of money. Inflation is particularly harmful to people with fixed income, and that will be people who are relying on either social security or a retirement pension. So it's very important to take into account how potential inflation may affect you in your financial planning. 
We're going to pause the video here. In the next video, we're going to introduce a tool called the time value of money, which will help you not just understand inflation, but actually figure out how would that impact um, your cost of living over time, as well as the basic tools that is very important for financial planning. I'll see you soon.